Well, it's either put your nose in there or sit back and watch everybody else do it. So when the green flag goes, if you got an opportunity, you gotta take it. The fun thing about it is that, you know, they say racing's a big family, and it's true. It is a big family. And the frenzy is made, and all the kids, I mean, they all play together, and they're all excited to see one another. And I mean, that's, that's the excitement about it. Nick Skalicki, founder of the Red River Kart Club, appeared on the very first episode of The Racing Life. Nick is Jesse Skalicki's uncle and has been a huge influence on Jesse's racing career from go-karts to pure stocks. My uncle, Nick, that uh, he was the one that raced the West Fargo for a while and that's like, exactly how I got into it. I showed up at my shop one day and there was a go-kart sitting on the ground. I was probably 10 or 11 years old, and uh, my dad and Nick and a couple other guys were standing there, and they just kind of looked at me and said, you want to race this thing? And I was like, yep. So that was kind of the start right there. I actually raced a Roadhog with a buddy of mine uh, out here at BRP, and we ended up winning seven features, and that kind of started the whole thing for it. And towards the end of that year, uh, Randall's excavating. Randall let me drive one of his pure stocks and uh, ended up winning one of the features in that class at the end of the year there. So that kind of, that really boosted it too. And the next year we ended up getting a pure stock. It's really, really time consuming. It takes, I mean, it's working on the car throughout the week and making sure it's ready and good to go. I used to play basketball and the coach kind of asked me, you know, if I want to do the next year, you know, I kind of got to pick one here and I had to go with racing, so kind of just split away from that, but i choose racing any day over anything else. I guess my favorite, just because I've been here so much, is right here at Glendon. Just I've got to used to running the high side of that track so many times and it's kind of just, you know, you can almost do it blindfold now, it's pretty cool, but it's a pretty fun track to run on here. Well, it's either put your nose in there or sit back and watch everybody else do it. So I figured, you know, it's when you get the opportunity to to get in there and make make your pass, you know, you got to take it. And there's been many times where it's you kind of think about it, and while you're thinking about it, it's gone. So you know, if you you kind of think your way through, and you know, when when the green flag goes, if you got an opportunity, you got to take it. The way I kind of look at it, I'm not. You know, I'm going out there and trying to win and race my own race, but I think it's from a fan point of view, you want to see someone that goes out there and gives it all they got to get to the front, you know. I don't know who wants to watch someone that just kind of sits around and has the opportunity to make the chance and go forward and just kind of sits there, you know. Doesn't do a whole lot, but I guess that's just how I kind of want to drive and race my own race and try to make it clean. And some, some are close calls once in a while, but that's racing. Yeah, bring her back, bring her back. There you go. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Right there. Okay. It's called a cheater's race. You can kind of do, you can really do pretty much anything you want. So uh, we had this wing laying around, and threw that on there, and you can take weights out, plate, you know, switch tires, anything you want. So we did. Pretty much, you know, what a lot of other people did around here. Not a whole lot of people had the wing, but uh, it's 
it's a pretty cool thing what that thing can do. I mean, it's I had my uncle tell me and some other guys that's gonna be a huge difference, and that kind of was like, ah, oh, it can't be that big a difference, you know. But when I went out there for the heat race, and and right when uh, green flag dropped and I could fly around those guys right away, it was, I knew it was gonna be a big difference. Being here with family and friends and just kind of the adrenaline you get out there, you know, thinking about it just kind of really annoys me because I don't like thinking about it. I like just to get here and get out there and be out on the track, but uh, it's it's just really fun being out there and being able to just see how the car sets up, you know, and when I got my uncle setting that thing up pretty good. It's really fun to race the thing. When it's karting and they're that young, they got to kind of learn, you know, that what's right and what's wrong. And you can't just be spinning people out and then keep on racing. The Racing Life is sponsored by Dakota Cat, Norman County Raceway, Superior Builders, Valley Alignment and Repair, Northland and Harry's Towing. In 2011, Jesse moved to a different role from go-kart racer to flag official, but some of his most memorable races happened during his go-kart career. For go-karts, we used to race in Staples, Minnesota in the Moto Dome, and uh, came down to one of the last races, and we were really, really close for points. And I don't really think my Uncle Nick was telling me how close we actually were. Me and this one other kid, we were kind of going at it pretty good. And uh, I, I needed to win this feature in order to uh, have the points in the bag. And it was pretty close right away. And uh, I ended up winning it. And it was, it was pretty cool coming in and seeing everybody there so happy and my uncle and everything. And so that was, that was probably one of the biggest highlights for carts. And then Pure Socks, I probably got to say this a couple weeks ago here at Corn Cob Nationals, we were actually running third for most of the feature. And on the last lap, the first and second guy got tangled up a little bit and there wasn't a whole lot of room between the wall and the, that first place car, but I put it up there anyways and we were scraping the wall going down the front stretch and that was right on the last lap. All this was happening and came out of four and came across the checkered and ended up winning the thing. And it was pretty cool seeing everybody when I came in. I'm actually uh, kind of the head flag man there at our go-kart track that my uncle and sailor kind of run. So uh, it's the Red River Kart Club and a lot, a lot has changed since I kind of got out of the go-karting. I mean, it was me and one other, our family and one other family towards the end there uh, a couple years ago and once, once we started getting things going, it's I'm not even sure. I'm sure you know the how the car count, and I think it's right around 40 carts there now, and that's that's pretty cool. I'm the head flag guy there, and I help out my cousin Caitlin and uh, Carter, and it's it's pretty pretty cool how many people actually show up for Cardi now. So just kind of helping them out and staying in it, it's pretty fun. There's always going to be complaints, you know, but it's. It's one of those deals where it's a complaint where, you know, the one kid kind of bumped the other kid and you're sending the one kid that was bumping to the back 
And the, you know, the parents are not gonna like that, of course, because it's just kind of racing. But I think when it's when it's karting and they're that young, they gotta kind of learn, you know, that what's right and what's wrong. And you can't just be spinning people out and then keep on racing, you know. And they've it's crazy how big of a difference it is when you put someone in the back or explain to them something like that, and they'll go out there and they'll race a couple inches from the other car and not touch them the next time, you know because they know what's right and what's wrong. So, I don't know, I guess if someone wants to complain, it doesn't really bother me. I don't really care. You know, there's four or five year olds out there right now, all the way up to 80, you know? But uh, it's it's pretty cool how they can, you know, they come in, you explain to them, you know, this is what you're doing right, this is what you're doing wrong, try this out. And it's crazy how well they'll actually listen to you and go out there and try it and they, kind of figure it out for themselves after that and they get they get branded pretty good and that's cool. They get going pretty crazy around there and you really gotta trust them, especially when you're standing a couple feet from where they're going. But yeah it's it's fun to be there. We'll be keep on going there at the at the cart track and more and more people I'm sure will be showing up and so I'll be in that for a while and as far as Next year, I'm not really sure. Uh, I know I'll be racing something, but uh, I guess we'll see what that something is next year. And then my grandpa said, if anybody ever gets hurt in my car, I'll quit, so he quit. Racing Life is sponsored by Performance Auto, Randall's Excavating, Nugget Vending, KRJB and KRJM, Elite Therapeutic Massage and Specialty Makeup. The Racing Life's Fan Pictures of the Week is sponsored by Superior Builders specializing in post-frame building. Thomas, racer of the 16 Soda Modified. This is my son Joseph. I'd like to ask him a question. What is your long-term goals in racing? Sprint cars. You're gonna race sprint cars? Yeah. How come you don't want to race a modified? I don't know. Too boring. Too boring? Oh. He's, just, he's gonna be a sprint car racer. Race with Donnie Schatz. Ashton Speaker, son of Chad Speaker of Sabin, Minnesota, is becoming a part of the family's racing history by honoring his great-grandfather's number two. Chad talks about how the racing all got started with his dad and his grandpa. My grandpa had uh, a business called the City Cab and uh, they started racing in about 1962, um, right out of that building and he, uh, he had some numerous drivers, um, started out with Don Gaida, uh, Sherwood Anderson, Bucky Peterson, and then his last driver, I believe, was Dave Scarry, and then that went till 1974. In 1968, um, just out of college, my dad decided he wanted to, uh, wanted to race also, so he started in the hobby stock class, and in 1971, he moved up to, I think at the time, they called them super sprints. They had wings, and, um, and he raced I think a few races, and then in June of uh, 1971, he had his had a big crash in West Fargo, flipped 12 times end over end, and 
was in the hospital for a week and my mom pretty much said mirror the car and well he chose my mom so <laughs> um so that's uh that was kind of the end of his career and um then so he just uh helped out my grandpa I was kind of the main crew chief on my grandpa's race team which in 68 uh Dave Scarry started driving for my grandpa which they had the famed the flying deuce and um, that's where Ashton gets his number so he he raced until 74 where he um, uh, crashed at West Fargo and died and, and then my grandpa said if anybody ever gets hurt in my car I'll quit so he quit and then um, my uh, my other uncle Donnie he continued to race I think he started in like 68 and he continued to race pretty much through 1981 um, raced uh, Knoxville and all over the country and um, just had some some hor horrific crashes that kind of ended his career and you know, they said, you know, you can't can't do this no more to your body, and and uh, but so that's you know, so 1981 was kind of the end of speaker racing until Ashton started racing. It was about 1992. Uh, Barry Robertson uh, moved in across the street from my parents, and I seen one day they brought home a race car. So I'm like, I just raced on over there and had to check it out, and uh, just started helping him and um, hung around with him and helped him for. 13 years and I mean had a lot of fun learned a lot of things and just got to live you know live a dream of hanging out with a race team I've been doing lettering for about 10 years and I just up out of the blue decided you know I, I was always watching these guys come around hand paint them and do the vinyl I'm like I can do that you know I'm pretty artistic and so I uh, so I just bought the machine and started doing it and I got to do it on Barry's cars and, and I, you know as I kept doing that, I'd pick up customers and, you know, clientele would come along and and then um, one time <clears throat> I started kind of toying around with the little trading cards, the driver cards, and somebody asked me, well, do you have any, you know, pictures on my car? I'm like, well, no, I can take some in the pits and, and no, we want some on the track. And so I looked into them, like, wow, you got to have some, you know, high-end camera equipment. And so again, I just bought all them, went and bought some camera equipment and tried it and, and you know, it just made the trading cards and the pictures and stuff that I did just so much better. So we put a cart together and had to really shorten up the pedals and, you know, made it fit him and so he was comfortable in it and got all the necessity safety stuff and, and went out there and gave it a whirl. The Racing Life is sponsored by Bad Cats Design and Print Solutions, Dakota Engine Builders, Red River Cart Club, Fargo Rental, Midwest Motorsports Weekly, RentalRaceCar.com. Here is the Racing Life's Question of the Week. Tony Brockhouse, uh, driver of the Dirt One uh, Legend car. Uh, I've got a question here from uh, Xander. Does it hurt to crash? Uh, it hurts a little bit at first. It hurts a whole lot more the, the next day. Uh, in 2008, I broke my back. Uh, pretty much spent 14 months uh, recuperating for it. And all I can thank is the safety equipment I was wearing. And I suggest everybody use all the safety equipment you can possibly get. If you just can't be too safe. Thanks for the question.
Being involved in racing his whole life, Chad was excited to get his son involved too, and he did right from the start. Ashton was born in um, 2006, and um, you know, right away I just, you know, put racing shirts on him. I mean, it was just, you know, I, my f first boy. I mean, he's got to have racing shirts just like his daddy. And so, uh, and being a big shots fan, we had a lot of shots wear, and, and uh, um, of course they didn't have shot shirts that small to, you know, fit a newborn. But he came home in a Donnie shot shirt, so. Um, so we, uh, you know, and it just, I just kept over and over. We'd look at racing magazines and play with race cars and, and all that. And so I just, you know, and then one day, um, you know, I mean, I always kind of thought it'd be fun if he got involved with racing and, and whatnot. And um, uh, my uncle Donnie, his boy raced go-karts and they had kind of grown out of him. And he had, a, he had one for sale. And so I went over and looked at it. And at that time, Ashton was three. So I was, you know, a little premature on it, but so I bought it, brought it home, and thought, well, we'll maybe try it next year. And um, so that uh, that winter, I, <clears throat> or that spring, I went out and talked to uh, went out and talked to Nick and uh, at the Red River Car Club, and you know, I said, you know, he's he's a little young, and um, but I said I've got him, you know, driving, you know, four wheeler and you know, riding a snowmobile and whatnot, and uh, um, so they, they approved it and said, yeah, we give it a try. And, so we put a cart together and had to really shorten up the pedals and you know made it fit him and so he was comfortable in it and got all the necessity safety stuff and and went out there and gave it a whirl and and uh, about three weeks after um, three weeks after he started racing we had a little mishap that uh, uh, throttle had stuck on the on the cart and um, and it was nothing nothing he did and it was just a little uh, malfunction on the cart so. He ended up putting it in the fence pretty hard and had to get ambulanced in and got checked out. And as we're walking out to the car, I said, so do you want to you want to keep racing? And he goes, yeah, I want to go next week. So didn't even phase him a bit. And we uh, fixed the car up and put it back together and haven't missed a race since. The fun thing about it is, it's, it, you know, they say racing's a big family, and it's true. It is a big family, and the friends he has made, and all the kids. I mean, they all play together, and they're all excited to see one another. And I mean, that's that's the excitement about it. And you know, you you just look past the expense and the hard work that it takes to put something together when you see these kids, and as young as Ashton and some of the other younger kids, and they're racing in full power racing go kart and they're doing it, you know, four and five, you know, and six, seven, whatever, and um, they're, they're doing it. And um, it, just that in itself, that they can control it and go through the corners and, you know, do a little bumping and, you know, and do some racing at that age, I think is just phenomenal. Chad is probably the biggest Donnie Shots fan there is. His basement is dedicated to all his Shots memorabilia, from pitchers to sprint car wings. Back in 2005, um, the Shots is put on their website, uh, who's the biggest Shots fan. And at the time we were packed up and we were getting ready to, uh, to move, so I had all my Shots stuff put away. So I seen this contest, so I unpacked all my stuff and put it all out and sent in my pictures and a few days later they voted on it. And for this they gave me a autograph signed wing from Donnie for being the uh, biggest shots fan at that time. I had a bunch of shirts that uh, I didn't know what to do with and I had a family friend who uh, made quilts and um, she uh, designed me up a quilt with all the shirts and now I guess I didn't have to throw them away and I'm able to kind of keep them and look at them and they're some of my favorite shirts that, uh, that he's had over the years and I could probably make another two or three quilts with all the shirts I have. For a long time I uh, nagged Donnie. I wanted wanted one of his suits and kept nagging him and nagging him and nagging him and Finally, one day he called me up and said, come on in and pick one out. So I went, in, went into his office and picked one out. And, and uh, he said, if I ever see this on eBay, I'll kill you. So, but, so here it hangs. I built a case for it. And probably one of, my, one of the best things I got from him. When you got in the seat, it was a whole different world. That little car, you're going really fast. In the dirt car, we're, we're tuning and setting up a lot more. And on the snowmobiling, it's a lot of just sheer endurance and a lot of muscular strength goes into all of it. Have anyone seen it? <laughs> <laughs> Try to win the thing, you know, so. Uh, it's, 
we'll have some pictures uh, right after this. I'll get you one. All right. 